If you want to know how to create the module frame from scratch, skip to the timestamp below. We will be using the module in the description to make frames draggable. Make sure the module is inside the replicated storage container. Create a local script inside the frame you want to be draggable. Require the module script and create a variable referencing the frame that you want players to be able to drag. Next, call the connect draggable frame function of the module passing the necessary arguments. The frame you want to become draggable should always be the first argument. If you want to drag the frame by a child frame, for example, some sort of top bar, pass that child frame as the second argument. If not, pass the draggable frame as the second argument as well. If you want the frame to be in bounds of the parent frame, pass the parent frame as the third argument, else leave the third argument blank. Finally, play test and drag the frame. This should also work for mobile players. Now, let's dive into how the module was made. Shout out to these two guys and their videos for helping me create this module. First, we need to make references to the user input service and the player's service. Next, we must get the client from the player's service. Before we create the main function of this module, we must make sure we have a screen GUI inside the player's player GUI container. This screen GUI will be used to properly position draggable frames that are not contained by other frame instances. The dummy screen, GUI, lets us know the full absolute size of the player's screen, ignoring GUI, insets, and screen insets. Now we create the connect draggable frame function. The first parameter represents the frame we want to make draggable. The second parameter, named top bar, represents the frame that when clicked and held allows us to move the draggable frame and the third parameter represents the parent frame, or parent screen GUI, of the draggable frame. It is important to keep track of the mouse position, the frame's position, and whether or not the frame is currently draggable. When calling this function, you can also only pass in the draggable frame and its parent. Because of this, we must default the third argument to the dummy screen GUI, since we use it to help us get the screen bounds to prevent the frame from being dragged out of the player's view. Now, we must create three input signal events. The input began signal allows us to know when the player interacts with the top bar to begin dragging the frame. It is important to account for the mouse's current position and the frame's current position in this code block. The input changed signal lets us know when the player moves their mouse cursor or finger. In this code block, we make sure that the frame is currently draggable and that the input was not a core GUI interaction like the chat box or the Roblox main menu. Next, we get the raw position calculated by incrementing the frame's position by the mouse cursor's change in position. Then we clamp this position's X and Y components within the boundaries of the parent frame or the default dummy screen GUI to assure the frame stays within bounds of its parent. Finally, we update the draggable frame with this constrained position. The input ended signal allows us to set the draggable boolean to false, preventing the player from dragging the frame if they have let go of their mouse button or touch screen. Finally, we add an ancestry changed signal to let us know when the frame gets destroyed. This allows us to know when to disconnect the input changed signal since the input began and input ended signals will automatically disconnect themselves when the frame is destroyed. It is important to know that when using this function for a frame that is parented to a screen GUI, you might want to leave the third argument blank. This is because when the module defaults to the dummy screen GUI, it produces the best results when bounding the draggable frame within the player's screen.
The parent GUI parameter is mainly used for when the draggable frame is contained within another frame instance. If you want to drag a frame by clicking the frame itself, it's important to pass that frame as the first and the same frame as the second argument when calling this function. If you want to drag a frame only when a child frame is held, for example, some sort of top bar frame, pass the main frame as the first argument, then pass the child frame as the second argument. 